Welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're talking about the various elements of grace and the work of salvation, and today we'll talk about original sin, which led to the unredeemed state of the human soul. So how did we come to this point? In ancient times, there was a man named Adam. He was the first man, and he lived in a safe location which we call the Garden of Eden. Not only that, but God had given him many amazing gifts that modern man doesn't possess, with the greatest of those gifts being immortality. Adam could not be killed. Not only that, but the vast majority of sins just weren't open to Adam. He couldn't steal, or murder, or commit adultery. There was only one sin that it was possible for Adam to commit, and it required a very direct and deliberate act of disobedience to God. In fact, it was such an easy sin to avoid that when Adam committed that sin, the consequences were devastating. You see, Adam wasn't just one man acting on his own behalf. He was the father of an entire species, and his actions had consequences for all of his children and their children and so on. His act of sin damaged both his body and soul, depriving him of his immortality and giving him an inward temptation to do evil, which he previously hadn't possessed, and which we call concupiscence. Because of his sin, therefore, we all have a terminal illness, mortality, and the inner temptation to do evil. This is passed on through our very blood, from father to child, and this is what we call original sin. Now, as great as the loss of immortality and the purity of our natural inclinations were to Adam, there was a much bigger obstacle associated with original sin. God, being perfect, could never condone even a single sinful act, especially one that so easily could have been avoided. This obstacle is bigger because the nature of God is literally impossible to change, even for God himself, and to condone any evil would require God to change drastically from what he is, to the point of no longer being perfect and therefore no longer being God. Because of this, the perfect divine justice of God needed to be satisfied before man could be brought back into a perfect union with him. For this reason, original sin made it impossible for people to be reunited with God after death, no matter how holy their lives were. We'll talk a little about that in the next episode when we discuss the unredeemed state itself, but for now, I want to take a look at the usual objection to the story of Adam and original sin. Eating a piece of fruit? Really? Is that really worth condemning someone to death and misery for the rest of their life, much less an entire race of people? Well, the problem here is that eating the fruit wasn't the only part of the sin. In fact, it might not even have been a sin if not for one thing. God had commanded Adam not to eat it. Adam's primary sin was defiant disobedience of God, not just eating fruit. He disobeyed God despite having every inclination not to, and no good reason for disobedience. I've heard a few theories on why Adam disobeyed. In the story, Eve, the wife of Adam, is tempted by a serpent and tempts Adam. It's been suggested that the word used to describe the serpent in the Bible doesn't really refer to a snake, but to some kind of large creature like a dragon or sea serpent, and it certainly wouldn't be the only time that Satan has ever been compared to a dragon. Faced with a creature like that, it's possible that Adam might have felt pressured by it in spite of his immortality. So his emotions might have affected his actions, preventing him from properly using his reason to make decisions. However, I don't think that's likely. In any case, there's nothing in the Bible itself to indicate that Adam even met the serpent, though I suppose Eve might have been intimidated by it. I think more likely it was just a matter of peer pressure. Eve was enjoying this fruit, and Adam wanted to share in whatever she enjoyed because he wanted greater closeness with her and was willing to disobey God and risk his relationship with God in order to make that happen. St. Thomas Aquinas wrote that it's most likely that Adam was aware of the horrible effect that the fall would have, both for him and for his children, but decided to do it anyway. I think that's probably true, and it would certainly go a long way towards explaining why his sin had such overwhelming consequences. Next time, we'll look at the unredeemed state to see what it was like being unredeemed. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.